Uh, joining us now live is Gary Giordano along with his attorney, Jose Baez. Gentlemen, thank you first of all for thank your you. willingness to, to come in here. I know your sons are behind you and you've been with them since last night and, and reunited with them. And, and this is an opportunity just to, to, to ask you some questions that sure. people have had because some things don't add up in their minds. So let's start from the beginning. What sure. happened August 2nd that day with Robin Gardner? Well, I've... Um I've been interviewed uh, for four months, um, taken back and forth uh, to my prison cell in prison um, with the uh, murderers and uh, all the, uh, the worst people in Aruba. And I've been interviewed and interrogated by the, the best Dutch investigators. I've answered that question 50, 60 times. Um, I'm not prepared to, at this point, go from the moment of that day to the end of the day. I'm just, I'm just not going to do that. Um, I'll answer specific questions you have, but I'm not going to sit here and answer something I've answered repeatedly. Um, specific questions about that day? Yeah, well, no, but yeah. But well, well, people were asking, well, that day there were many accounts that you all had been drinking heavily. I've never heard that. Yeah. See, Gary's <laughs> been incarcerated mm -hmm. on, and hasn't had the benefit of the media onslaught that has been uh, brought forth against him. And, you know, to, to sit here and listen to uh, Matt's piece where uh, he mentions that there's a mountain of circumstantial evidence, there's a mountain of nothing, uh, not even a mountain of sand as it relates to any type of crime that was committed. Unfortunately, uh, Robin has disappeared. She disappeared in the water. Uh, if judges are not in the business of releasing people, mm -hmm. especially with mountains of circumstantial evidence against them, and the appellate court even uh, upheld that, so you know but what's some been people might, some people who say, excuse me, might sure. differ with that in saying the the circumstantial. I mean, um, to say that you were in the water that day, what was the condition of the of the sea that day when you all went snorkeling? Well, I, I'll answer this. I'll, the, the drinking thing. Mm -hmm. I, I know there was videos of us at the Rum Runner, okay? We didn't order drinks, we weren't drinking heavily, she was walking, I was walking, we were a sober couple, okay? As for, and I'll just interview myself if you don't mind, okay? The hard questions I understand are, um, he took her to a remote location, right? We were 100 yards from a scuba diving store with tanks in the back. We were 100 yards from a scuba diving store, not a remote location, okay? we were in view of other people at Baby Beach. The, so let's clear that up. Me leaving the island, okay? Me escaping from the island, or how they put it. Which I went was, down. Which was extremely misreported. Yeah. Which I, met, I met with Robin's mother at eight o'clock mm -hmm. on that morning and met with the ambassador, the uh, US um, amb uh, embassy representative. I said I would stay here till Robin's mother you know, needed me. When we met with her, she said, Gary, you should, you should go home. I'm, my cousin's coming in. She's going to be my support. Robin's mother told you that? Yes, in front of the U.S. Uh, representative, ambassador representative. And then her name was Winnie. And I asked her, should I go in front of Robin? She said, yes, you should go on your already scheduled flight. Okay? I mean, the round trip. Mm -hmm. Then I left there, went down with my attorney, uh, Ruben attorney, to uh, another interview. Okay? They interviewed me again. At the end of the interview, and this is maybe the fourth interview as a witness, we told them I'm leaving. We talked to Rob, we told them what happened in the morning, and, uh, and, and uh, we were leaving. They gave me my camera back, they gave me my snorkel and mask back, and they said, we are not keeping you here. You, you're free to go. So I went to the hotel, I checked out, I went to the airport, and I approached the desk, and the lady said, oh, by the way, uh, Charlotte Airport is closing because of a, a tropical storm that went north of the island but there's a plane leaving now. And she asked you about your traveling companion, Robin. Right. And you said she's taking another flight. I did not. I, no. no, you didn't say no, that? No, I, I don't know exactly what I said, okay? But um, I didn't want to go, what I didn't want to say is, I don't want to get into a long conversation about what's going on. She's a ticket agent. And she said, she's with you, and I just said, she's not with me. I don't know exactly what I said. And then she said, you have to go now. And they were announcing on the PA system, this plane is leaving. So I'm running in the, you know, in the Reuben airport. I go through customs, blah, 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 check in my bag, and um, uh, the gate is open. And then uh, the head of detectives walks up to me and says, we're arresting you for the murder of Robin Gardner. Before all this happened, 
right after what you said that she was swept out to see there is surveillance video of you and this is supposed to be right after you got out of mm -hmm. the ocean mm -hmm. and you can see it right here uh, you you don't seem to you know you're casually just knocking on doors it doesn't seem like you've been in the ocean and completely you're, you're dry there well, how that, do you explain your your that's actions totally incorrect after? that's totally incorrect you can see I'm dry there how can you tell I'm dry there there is over 50 pictures of me after this film there are pictures of you know, when they all came down I'm wet okay I'm wet so this video here yes okay yes okay so when I came out of the water, I was, I was exhausted. I had my tennis shoes on when we went in the water, and when I came back, I was swimming back. It was exhausted when I got back to the to shore. And then I had to run all the way around. Here was the thing. It's like running a marathon, and you come around the last corner, and you're expecting a whole crew of people yelling for you, and there's nobody there. You're not going to go high-five the air. I went around there before there was people there. There's nobody there. There's not one person in the parking lot. Those are storm doors. The bathroom is where she went in right there. They had closed the doors. They're gone. The scuba diving shop is closed. There isn't a single car in the parking lot. So I'm screaming in the air. But me, most people, Gary, would, would they feel that they would react if you're, you're I, out I swimming. Ex I know, but if you're I, out I swimming, your person is what is. It is. I can't that you would be a little more excited about trying to get her help. There's but nobody there. What am I, I'm supposed to scream into the air. And then when you see me turn, mm -hmm. um, I heard people talking around the side where we originally parked, and I went over and asked for help. I told them to call the emergency, because I didn't know there was 911 in a room, but I don't know the number. They called. I mean, I saw reports saying that I called 911 in a calm voice. I never spoke to 911, never. The woman did, right? Can you understand how some people who, and I know that you, as, as Jose said, you haven't been following this because you've been right. in jail, but that people who have been following it extensively, and yes, some things are not gonna be quite correct, but when you stack up uh, the, the life insurance, which we haven't even talked about. Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Right. Why would you take out that kind of travel insurance on, on a companion, somebody that you had you known for a couple of years, but it basically was a casual relationship. Well, if you if you go to the website, it's still live. You can go anybody can go on there. It's and I've purchased it many times mm -hmm. before. It's cancellation insurance. It's travel insurance, and the first thing is cancellation insurance. And when you click that button, you have to enter the names. If we were traveling, the three of us, I could type in the three names, mm -hmm. or just your name, or just your name. But then when you go further down and click the medical, and the, the emergency dental, um, and the um, accident insurance. When you select those, if I put three names up there, all three are covered. You can't unselect anybody. So I have children, I have a house, a, a large house, and, and a lot of payment. And, and if I, if I uh, go traveling and I disappear, I want them to be covered, okay? Mm -hmm. So I maxed that on everything. Medical, I think, was 150,000 or whatever. And, but that's automatic. I can't unselect Robin, okay? And when it came down to the, the accident insurance, you can't unselect her. Okay, so when I selected that, I was selecting it for me, mm -hmm. and thus she got the same thing. So that's a good explanation of, and, and right. there are people who, who take out that type of insurance. Right. She's missing, and two days later, you're inquiring about, you're not trying to collect, but you're, but you're inquiring. Well, Why would question. you do that, and she's still missing? It, it's exactly right. Okay, so I mean, that's a wonderful question, and I understand that. My lawyer, um, at the time, not, not, not this not man Jose. here, <laughs> Michael Lopez, okay, he had, he told me, he said, you need to call insurance immediately because these hel helicopters and scuba divers that were going to go into water, which they didn't go in till days later, he said, they might send you an invoice. They might be sending you, you know, charging for this because these are civilians. He said, you need to call your insurance company and let them know and ask them specifically how do you deal with the, these expenses that might mm -hmm. be coming in. And let, and let me jump in here because I think there's something important that people should know. When I got involved, um, I was not welcomed by Mr. Lopez. In fact, I, I found it very odd that I, I was offering, the family had hired me, I was offering my help, and he was very standoffish with me. And what I ended up learning later on is that he had a significant conflict of interest. What he ended up doing was not only was he's seeing dollar signs by the insurance. He is a personal injury lawyer. In fact, he tried to get Gary to sign a retainer agreement where he would be getting one third of the insurance money. And that's how this whole claim business got started. So he comes into play there. There are some people that would argue that say, still, if somebody tells me to do that, 
And my, my companion is missing. I, I, I would disagree. I, I, don't with, know. I would disagree with you, you because if you're in a foreign country and you don't know how things operate there. And trust mm -hmm. me, when you're in a completely different land where the language is different, the culture is different, the way that your rights are different, you're going to follow what you think is sound advice. And if your lawyer is telling you something, I don't think anyone would argue let, with following let, your let lawyer's me, advice. Let me, but one, one more important piece. If I'm here to, you know. Sure. I, there is a Holland Handbook for Travelers. It's a Holland Handbook for Travelers. It tells you what to do in case of a missing person. The first thing it says is call authorities. The second thing it says is call your insurance company. Okay. It is produced by the Holland Dutch government. Okay. So my lawyer was guiding me through that, I'd imagine, but it's written, it's in print, and then you say, how do people, why did you do that? The government itself says that's what you should do. But the, the question on everyone's mind, Gary, and you know this, they want to know if you had anything to do. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. In my mind, do you feel responsible is, at all? I, I mean, if feel you're out as the ocean if a person she... that I cared about, okay, mm -hmm. a companion. If you, I was traveling with mm -hmm. you, or you, it, it, you know, has has disappeared on my watch. That that it, it will weigh heavily on me for a very long time. What you don't know about Aruba is Aruba has two main sources of income, and it's not tourism. It's cocaine and human trafficking. And where we were, it takes a half hour to drive a boat to Venezuela. And right where we were, I find out, that's where they drop off illegals to swim to shore. Would you have done anything differently? Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, that's a silly question. I mean, that's really, of course, there's a missing person. Would I do something different? Yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have come. I wouldn't have left. I mean, I mean you can't unring a bell, right though, you know? Gary, thank you. You're welcome. Jose, thank you. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate it very much.